I'm going to show you an Ampere server. This is called the EMAG CPU and it's an ARM processor. It's very quick. It has lots of cores inside of it and it looks great on HTOP. So I've provisioned one of these on packet and I'm going to log in as a root user over SSH. It has the latest Ubuntu preloaded, which is very nice. And then we type in HTOP. We can see plenty of cores. Now there is a new version called, I think the Ultra, and that's gonna have 120 to 128 cores, and that'll be available soon too. You could just imagine that your HTOP is using more space to show you the CPUs than actually what workloads you're running. I think that's pretty cool. So one of the other things that we can do whilst we're here is maybe just install Kubernetes because why not? Now that is, let me just show you what architecture this is. If we do a U name, this is an ARCH64, so 64-bit ARM. Now I have Ketchup, which is my preferred uh, way to install Kubernetes. And uh, no surprises there, this is a tool that I've actually made myself scratch an itch, I had to keep installing Kubernetes for loads of tutorials and it was so repetitive that I made this tool to make it easier. And it's quite simple really, and we can even just install with a single node, there's no need to taint this to get it to work. We simply pass in the IP address and the user, and if we pass in the argument help, we can see all these other commands like Perhaps you don't want traffic built into K3S. Perhaps you don't want their load balancer. Well, you can turn that stuff off really easily. All I want to do then is um, the install as root and probably one other thing. Let's go and, because not many people know how to do this, let's merge it into my kube config. Now by default, K3S is just called something like default but I'm going to give it a special context name here of um, Ampere K3S. I'm then going to use the K3S channel of latest and the channels are a way that um, the rancher team have put into this so that we don't have to pin to 118 or 117. So I want latest or I want stable and it will match you to the right release. Now in addition with setting that context, I also want to merge this to my local cube config. So I'm gonna put local home dash cube config. And what else do I need? So we've got local, that should be local path. The local option is for if you want to install on the machine without using any form of um, SSH. So local path, and then the last thing we want is the merge flag, and that's merging into the existing context. Right. Now we do have other options, like we can say, I want to use embedded etc. D for this cluster. I want to do HA with Kubernetes. We'll just keep it simple. I expect this to be pretty fast because Packet or Equinix Metal, as are now known, have a very quick uplink. Here's a moment of truth, starting K3S. It's gonna start pulling down images. If you're running on a Raspberry Pi, you do tend to need to tune things a little bit, um, set your kernel so that it's gonna load C group support. That's really well documented. You can just Google for that. Well, here we are. Uh, it's merged into my cube config, my bigger one, and if I have a look at kubectx, we've got all of my clusters I've been playing with here. More importantly, we've got the Ampere one, and rather than having to point at the specific config, I can now just simply do this. We look at my cube context again, there we go, and let's get the pods. So we're starting up, let's get the nodes ready, so ready to take workloads. Uh, it was just so fast. Now these are all ARM64 containers. Any binaries you want to run on there, any containers you need to build need to be ARM64 as well. One thing we can do very, very quickly 
is use the arcade tool to just install a app. Now, some of these are not supported for ARM or ARM64, but I know that ARM OpenFAS is because I did that myself. I added the support there. So when we run the arcade command, what's actually happening, as you can see here, is it's just running Helm for you. It downloads Helm 3, puts it in a nice place for you, grabs the latest version of the chart, any flags that you pass in, then get mapped into values, YAMLs, and overrides. And within a short period of time, you've got the software installed. You didn't have to tra trawl through GitHub. You didn't have to look at a chart readme. Everything that's important is bubbled up. Things like, I want HA for my gateway three replicas. I want to create a load balancer. I want to do this as a cluster role so that I can have multiple namespaces. These important flags are uh, bubbled up for you. So let's have a look and see what we've got in the open FAS namespace. Well, we've got everything and it's already running. That was so fast. Okay, now we can open the open FAS UI and the arcade info command will give us the password for it. So all we need to do is port forward in this case. We don't necessarily want to expose it on the internet before we've configured TLS. Do a login and let's find our password. There we are. And finally, we'll open this in a browser on 8080 admin and password. Here's the open FAS UI. Again, this is just a very quick and easy way of getting uh, up and running. Now the function store for 64-bit ARM is more limited. Uh, I would really welcome people to contribute functions or to port the existing ones across. I think as ARM64 becomes more important and more relevant for maybe business users, we will go ahead and do that. Incidentally, if a company like Ampere or ARM or Packet wants to sponsor more ecosystem efforts, again, would really welcome, uh, welcome that because it will help us do so much more. Now this function I've just deployed will give me a SHA of any value that I put in there, I'm just gonna put my password, hit invoke. So these are very, very fast functions. This is just a utility method from Bash. Um, but you can go and build your own functions. Most programming languages are supported now. There are some multi-arc templates in OpenFAS. And uh, there we go. So, in a pretty short period of time there, we've been able to install Kubernetes using Ketchup install. We used RK to install OpenFAS. And if we look across our cluster now, we'll see what's there. OpenFAS is there, our SHA sum is there, and a great feature built in is metrics. kubectl top pod in all namespaces, and we can go top node as well. We've obviously only got the one node using 1% of the CPU to have all of that installed. And then we can see that what we've actually added ourselves, barely consuming any RAM at all, which is, uh, which is great. So hopefully this has inspired you to go and have a look at 64-bit ARM, to go and deploy maybe open OpenFAS, play around with ketchup. Hope you have fun.